Hey guys, it's the Plum Dot here, and welcome back to my channel for the third and final part of the lodge which I built for Spellburst A to Z Baby Challenge. Now, as I always say, if you guys haven't checked out part one and part two, I highly suggest that you go and do that so you can be on the up and up about what has happened with the exterior of the home as well as the main level. So for part three, we are going to be starting off in the basement where the children are kept and <laughs> Wait, you don't keep children in the basement. It's just where their bedrooms are, okay? <laughs> you shouldn't keep kids in basements. That is just awful. And then we will be going up to the tippy top of the house where the children's study area is. So we're starting off in the one of the bedrooms, which I decorated as the children's bedroom um, because there's more childlike things in there like you just saw that there's a toy box and then also that sort of superhero poster which I really love that poster. I tried to place it in another one of my builds but it didn't work with the decor that I had so I was so happy that it worked in this room. And then we also have another bedroom which I decorated for the teens. There are two bathrooms down here, one of which you won't see on camera because they are essentially the same. And then in the middle between the two bedrooms we have sort of a rumpus hangout area. So in Spellburst LP, if you guys have been keeping up on it, she actually made one of the bedrooms, I believe it was this bedroom for the boys and the other one is for the girls, which is actually kind of smart to keep the boys and the girls separated, unlike me who made one the children's bedrooms and the, the other one the teen bedroom. So she had it right and I had it wrong. But if you download this house, download this house, you can do whatever the heck you want with it. So it is up to you. So I am just going through and working on the bedspreads. Bedspreads. I can never say that word. I always say bread spread and there's no R in the first part and it's really annoying me. Um covers. We're going to say covers. We're working on the covers or the duvets and I'm doing my little trick where I do the background as white and then you have the little pops of color come through. And I stuck with the same theme on the walls where that we've got the white background and the gray sort of comes through and it's really subtle so you can almost sort of see the patterns and I just really like it because it lends a sense of neutrality but then you also have a little bit of personality in the covers so the kids can pick whichever they like based on their preferences which is nice. So one of the things that I didn't like about this room is those logs. How creepy would it be to wake up in the middle of the night and just look out your window and you're staring at logs. I don't like that. So off camera, which I did do a lot of things off camera, as you'll know if you watch part two, I went through and I put in some curtains. So if the kids want to shut the curtains to not have to look at those horrible logs, then they are able to. Now, the other thing that I really like is that this is a walkout basement. I didn't use the basement tool to create these bedrooms. So the two bedrooms are at the front. So they've got the windows and you can bring a lot of light in and the bathrooms are at the back. So we're working on what I had dubbed the teen bedroom and I didn't want to use a lot of bunk beds. Now, if you watched Spellburst LP before she started using the lodge, you'll know that each of the kids' bedrooms had four beds in it. So I wanted to try to come up with a layout where I didn't have to use more than one set of bunk beds. And I would definitely pick this room and I would pick a single, a single bed instead of the bunk bed that's in this room. When I was a kid, I actually did have bunk beds, but I always slept on the bottom bunk. And when I had friends over, I made them sleep on the top bunk because there were many of times when I did use the top bunk that I would wake up in the middle of the night and hit my head on the ceiling. <laughs> so I was like, nope, I am sleeping on the bottom. So I would definitely choose one of the single 
beds in this bedroom and the other thing that I like is that the beds are all facing different directions. I couldn't think of anything worse than having to stare at one of my siblings constantly if I shared a bedroom with them and it's kind of like they have their own separate space because they're all facing different ways and looking out different ways so I really liked how this was laid out. So I'm just doing the covers for the teen bedroom and on the first one we had sort of a really dark blue and white and then the second one that's at the bottom of the screen at the moment it was black and white and then there was orange and white or yellow and white and then green and white. Now we discussed this a little bit in part two where I held up my hand and I admitted that olive green is one of my favorite colors. I don't know why I denied it for so long. I love olive green. So, and I use it in almost every one of my builds. So it was time to fess up. I love olive green just like I love the color yellow. So I'm just doing a little bit of recoloring at the moment and you can see sort of what my thought process was with this being the teen bedroom because you've got more sort of teen-like posters. You've got the cork boards that are on the other wall um, and you've got sort of those, the the posters, the movie posters, and I just thought it worked really well. Now one thing that didn't work well and does change is the patterns on the wall. That is like a psychedelic trip. I don't know what I was thinking with the with the stripes going into the dots, but could you imagine walking into that room in real life and having to look at that? Your eyes would trip out. So that does change in the screenshots as a lot of things do in this build because I wisened up to my mistakes. So here we are in the bathroom, which is essentially the same as the other bathroom that is on this level. Now, if you guys are wondering why I have used the cheapest toilets, I was still like confident and under the impression that I could get this build down in budget. Um, Spellburst had given me a budget of 50 to 60,000 simoleons at first, and then when I was having trouble with that, she upped it to about 80. And I can't see what we're at at the moment, but we're in the hundreds of thousands of simoleons right now. So I was a little bit deluded thinking that I could still play test the price down and that definitely didn't happen. So we've got bargain johns down in these bathrooms, but the good thing about them is that they are upgraded. So they are upgraded to unbreakable, which is really good because if you watched uh, the beginning episodes of Spellburst LP, there was a lot of overflowing clogged toilets happening. They were constantly breaking and I don't know what she was feeding the kids where they would constantly clog the toilets, but it wasn't an episode if something wasn't overflowing. So I fixed all of the bathrooms and in fact my testers upgraded everything that was possible to be upgraded. So I hope that Spellburst enjoys that not having to fix the toilets constantly, although they will need to be cleaned every now and again. So speaking of playtesting, a funny thing happened. Um, it's funny now, um, but it wasn't funny when it was happening. Like I said, I extensively play test everything, but where I went wrong is that I wait until the very end, until everything is complete before play testing. And I don't know why I do that to myself because I had a major problem when I was play testing the lodge. The stairs didn't work. None of the stairs worked. I would have my sim come downstairs and they could get down the stairs. That wasn't the problem. It was coming back up. That was the problem. And it was like they were floating through the main level. And you could see their little footprints like they were a ghost. And it was really, really creepy. But there were several times while this was happening that I was near tears because I didn't know how to fix it. I googled the problem several times. I bulldozed most of the main area and this downstairs area. I tried to move the stairs. Everything that I could possibly think of, I tried to do and none of it was working. Turns out all I needed to do was reset my sim. <laughs> I am, I was a mess though. Like 
How, uh, who would have thought that it was such an easy fix as resetting your sim? But the stairs work now, guys. So you guys won't have to go through any of the heartache that I went through. But it was scary for a moment. I was this close to bulldozing the entire thing and going, uh, let's just start over. But thankfully, I didn't have to do that because it did take me quite some time to build this and get it to the way that I wanted it to look. So at the moment, we are in the little rumpus area, as I like to call it, where the kids can come and hang out with their friends and just sort of chill. So we've got a ping pong table. You saw me place down an arcade machine. There's a stereo and then in the little nook next to the stairs, there are some balls that they can play with. That sounds really bad. There's some, I don't even know what to call it. They are balls. There's balls that the kids can play with, okay? <laughs> and frisbees. But I will have to say, this layout, how everything is laid out, it changes yet again. And this was due to the fact that it was the arcade machine that couldn't be used and I couldn't you move the door to the teen bedroom um, because there was nowhere else to put it so I had to completely rearrange the space so in the screenshots and also in the download you will see that the ping pong table is now against the wall where the arcade machine and the arcade machine is now where the ping pong table is but you'll have to be careful because as I noticed in Spellverse LP the kids love that arcade machine and they naturally gravitate towards that so if you don't keep an eye on it on your kids that is most likely where they are playing the arcade machine which is pretty cool but sometimes you have to focus on other things so i'm just going through and recoloring these chairs which i thought they were pretty cool to have in sort of a children's space have something that's like crate made i think those are really awesome i love those and i'd love to have those in a rumpus room so i had to make sure the patterns were a little bit different because sometimes i don't like things that are all samey samey matchy matchy so i changed it up a couple times and decided on this pattern but ooh, that wasn't a burp i promise i just had a hiccup <laughs> i'm so sorry um but yeah just putting on the final touches of this lower level before we travel to the tippy top. But first we're going to play with the rugs and this rug came with university life. Now the thing that I love about this is that you can put them together and make sort of a pattern. It is a little bit of a pain to get them to, to mesh together. Um, but it's worth it in the end. It's very, very cute, and I like how that looks. But, of course, it's not cute when you have to redo it because you have to completely move everything. So here we go. Up, 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 up. And we are now in the children's study room where they go and get all learned and smart. Like, if you wanted to homeschool your kids, this would be the perfect space for it. Now, this upstairs area was massive when I first started out. So I made a little deck area that you just saw me do just to use up a little bit of the space. But I do decorate it. I do end up putting a telescope out there and also just a little seating area for the kids. So upstairs, in order to learn your children, what can they learn? Well, they can learn the logic skill from the chess table. They can learn the painting skill from the easel. And I'm going to put in a fireplace because who doesn't like to study by a fireplace? I used to love, when I was at university, going to um, the libraries. And a lot of the libraries when I went to university had fireplaces. And it was just so cozy. I'm losing my voice. I'm so sorry. Um, it was just so cozy to be able to study by the fire. So I put in a couple of computers for the kids to use. And then also there's just a little sort of chillaxing reading area and that is basically how this room stays although I do go and next to the other desk I end up putting in the portable piano because why wouldn't you want to learn the piano skill I used to take piano lessons when I was younger and I was really really bad although my mom did have a piano book where she had 
she had written on her piano the numbers to the notes. So I could play the piano by numbers, but I couldn't play the notes because I can't read music. <laughs> So that is basically how this space stays, but it does look like a really cool study area. Because I'm a nerd, I would much rather be in this space than I would downstairs in the rompus room. I just love it. I just think it's very, very cute, and the kids would definitely enjoy being in here. So that is basically the layout of the upstairs. And there's not much left to do except for laying out a little bit of clutter, recoloring everything, and putting on the wall coverings, which I must say was not difficult because we have got logs, people, and this whole upper floor is logs. And I thought it worked well because it's sort of open to the entry below, which of course is logs. So I think I'm going to love you and leave you guys for the rest of the video. If you enjoyed this, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. And if you guys aren't already subscribed and you like what you see, why don't you go ahead and hit that button? Don't be a plum stranger now, guys. Bye!